Jesus has already descended into the realm of the dead once to deliver the good news to those who had gone before him. And he doesn't plan on returning there again just so he can save those of you who had the chance to confess his name while still alive but refused to do so. This is your chance if you haven't done so already to be numbered with the blessed and not with the wicked and lazy. Enter by the narrow gate. The Bible says that the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. If I were you, I wouldn't put it off any longer. Unless, of course, you want your destiny to be hell. Because Jesus Christ has returned to execute judgment and to set up his kingdom. He has solemnly proclaimed that when he returns, he will send his angels and they will gather all the evil doers and throw them into the furnace of fire. The last thing you want to hear when you face Christ, the King, is Him pronouncing to you the condemnation, depart from me, accursed one, into the eternal fire. Wouldn't you rather hear Him say, Come, you who are blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom. Humans would be born perfect, free from sin, if it wasn't for the original sin that stains us all. Which is why salvation requires more than just an act of individual repentance. The universal name of Jesus unites all Christians. Unless, of course, you prefer the name of your denomination over his. Don't make Allah a lie by saying he is a different God and is not our Father. When Adam saw that he had lost his divine nature, he realized that he was naked without it. Why are you repaid at the resurrection of the righteous for receiving the poor, crippled, lame, and blind because you gave a sense of life to them when most others wouldn't. The reason the Antichrist cannot be revealed until Jesus returns is because the body of people who are against him cannot become clearly apparent until then. It is only after he returns that it will be seen by their actions who they are. Believers are the body of Christ in the flesh. The unbelievers are the body of the Antichrist in the flesh. Alcohol may not be an excuse, but it does explain most of my worst behavior. If it hadn't been for alcohol, I wouldn't have done a lot of the sinful things I did in the past. Which is why you should disregard a lot of these things instead of using them against me 
when you make your decision on whether or not you believe I'm the Christ. If you say that I'm not Jesus in the flesh, then you're acting like the Antichrist. Slightly altering a fable doesn't really matter as long as the basics of the story are nearly the same, since it was not based on something that literally happened. Which is why most of the small differences between what the Quran says about it and what the Bible says about it aren't worth considering when determining whether one or the other is false. Jesus is the Word of God. Therefore, if he wanted to make some changes to the Bible so that it matches what is currently being revealed, he has the full right to do so, even if there are prohibitions against doing such a thing contained in the Bible itself. We can assume that those prohibitions do not apply to the author of it. Do not challenge him if he decides that such a move is necessary. If you want your second marriage to be sanctioned by the church so that you can take communion again, you'll have to be granted a special grace that absolves you of the sin of divorce adultery. Please don't abuse this favor. The only reason I'm doing it is because it would be unjust to do otherwise. If your ministry is a pretext for greed, then you have what can rightly be called a Judas ministry. I'm not saying all Protestants are going to hell. What I am saying is that they will definitely, without a doubt, not be in the kingdom of God on this earth. Sooner or later, Protestantism will be so divided because of denominations Orism, that you won't be able to find two or three Christians gathered in my name, which is why I believe Protestantism is so evil. It is part of the devil's strategy to remove Christ from our midst. A woman who has an abortion is still going to have a baby, whether she wants to or not. A dead baby. Forgiving is the greatest and most necessary form of giving. Expect God's indignation on your nation if it fails to join his nation.